So, Paul, I can hardly believe that it's ten years since the end of your first season as Mansfield manager. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? It, it has flown. Um, I get uh, reminders through social media now, you know, you know, with the, with the years uh, that have passed. And, uh, yeah, there were some fantastic memories from, you know, from that time. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, ten years. It's... Um, it's flu, hasn't it? Yeah, it certainly has. And uh, obviously we, we're catching up today because you still are the last manager in Mansfield Town's history to achieve a promotion. But come five o'clock on Saturday, if results go Mansfield, Mansfield's way, that title will, will no longer be yours. First and foremost, I know that you obviously speak to uh, people at the club on an almost daily basis, good friends with Coops and other people in and around the academy as well. What have you made of, of their journey so far this season? Well, it's, it's, it's been excellent. Um, I, I'm, I'm, it's really nice to see uh, the club flourishing again. Um, I think it's been a bit of a roller coaster uh, since since it's, you know the club's been in League Two. Um, you know, but um, you know, fingers crossed that the you know that firstly uh, the club get the result they need on on Saturday and, and the results go for them. Um, it'd be lovely to see the club automatically promoted. Um, if not, it's still that massive. Um, plus of, of, of going up through the playoffs. Now, there's a lot of parallels between, you know, we, we, we've spoken quite often about the, the promotion season, which will be 10 years next season, which I'm sure we'll catch up about again uh, in the future. But there's actually a lot of parallels between this current season and your first season. Slowish start, a few sort of knocks and niggles in the middle and then a, a flourish towards the end. It's quite interesting to see how that has sort of formed and how that's sort of unfolded, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I, I can clearly remember the, the seasons. You know, first and foremost, my, my teams were never really good at getting off to a good start. And, uh, you know, it, I think some of the fans were joking, uh, even joke now when I, when I bump into them, that, you know, they, they wanted to come in the uh, Santa outfits in, in August. Um, but no, the, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of parallels between between the two, um, uh, two between the two time zones. And, uh, you know, let, let's hope it's replicated in, you know, right, right to the full. And that um, you know, we see Mansfield Town get promoted into into League One. See what I gain from you all the time. Every time that I speak to you, is that obviously you've, you've got this massive affinity with with the club, and all that you want to see is, is, is to see them go on to flourish and have success. Yeah, um, I, I think it was really special times for me, and um, you know, if, if you know, and I've spoken to John a, a few times after, and you know, um, probably if I'd had my time again, I'd, I'd have probably made different decisions. But you know, it, it was what it was. Um, there's a massive piece of me, uh, I think, still at the club and, and still hankering for the club to to go on and, and, and progress. And, and dare I say, you know, if it was to do this season, I'm sure John would, you know, would push the boat out to try and to try and get the club into the championship. Um, you know, for me, you know, you've got the you know the best owners in. You know, in, in in that league by a country mile, and he's always um, not just financially, but um, emotionally, spiritually, he's always backed. Um, you know, the club and, and, and backed the people in charge, and um, you know, sort of reminiscent on on some of the times we had at the club. You know, the noise and sights and sounds. You know, my my daughter, my youngest daughter, was was massive part of the the Wrexham game and sort of first her, her first impression of. You know, a football match, and um, you know, these things that she'll never forget. So, there's a massive part of me still at the club, and and um, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, school duggery in, in football, but I, you know, I, I just want I'd, I'd love Mansfield to do well uh, moving forward. Um, you know, if you if you've been a you know, like an affinity with the club as, as I have, um, I don't think you should want anything other than that. Yeah, and of course, see, we we look back at your time, and like we say, that that first season where we ended up finishing in, in the playoffs and sort of got in towards the the back end of the season. What goes through your head as a manager? How do you sort of keep your your players grounded and keep them focused when you know that they've got to go out on the final day of the season, get a result to ensure that you know the season does get extended, or in, inevitably that there is a little bit of success in there as well. Well, I mean, you know, the two seasons, one, the, the playoff season uh, where we played York, um, I actually thought that we were a little bit hard done by because we had Greeny sent off in the first leg at, at York, didn't we? And and I, I think we massively missed Greeny in the, in the second uh, in the second leg. I'll be totally honest, in the, uh, you know, in the Wrexham game, we, we played a lot of games uh, in quick succession towards the end of the season, did a lot of travelling up to the Wrexham, up to, up to Barrow. And... 
Um, you know, one thing we kept away from everyone was that, you know, myself and the players were absolutely shattered mentally, physically. Um, you know, I, it was taking its toll. You know, I had a player approach me on the day of the game and um, told me that he didn't think he could play because he was that, you know, psychologically sort of shattered. And um, it, the, the interesting conversation was, I said, you know, you're a big player for us and you've got to act, you know, like you can in the dressing room because I think it's all a psychology. And as, as you saw on that last game against Wrexham, um, you know, we, 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 we kind of stumbled over the line, Craig, if I'm honest. You know, Greeny, you know, with a, a great penalty. Um, Louis Briscoe, uh, fantastic, you know, fantastic talent. Went through, got us a penalty. Greeny, Greeny put the penalty away. And then we, uh, we kind of just sort of rolled over the line, if that makes sense. Um, what I can say, Craig, is I can still remember now uh, the, the last sort of three or four minutes of the game. And if you play the highlights back, you hear the crowd totally get behind the lads. And, um, you know, these are little things that I think, I think money can't buy and that, um, you know, still to this day send, send the hairs on the back of neck up, you know, and, and give me goosebumps. Um, you know, that noise probably got us over the line because if you, if you remember Wrexham, were, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to really come forward and really try and score a goal against us. So, um, fantastic memories, but... Like I say, it was um, it was a great shift by the boys because there was a, there was a few tired legs out there, and I think there was a few mentally that were uh, that were that were mentally tired as well. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing to to think about that because, as you say, it, it's one of them where you you look back at you look back on it and you you just think how much of a, a difficult proposition it was on towards the the back end of the campaign, and that home crowd is is absolutely keen. You know, it's a home game on Saturday afternoon against Forest Green Rovers, a, a, a side that are top of the table or have been top of the table all season. And for me, I think that home advantage is massive. And I think Nigel Clough, who now occupies the Stags dugout, will, will, will know that. Yeah, look, it's um, it's 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 a really it's a really important thing. I think that, that, that the club's at home on the last game of the season. You know, I've heard already that it's a sellout. Um, you, you look, the fans of, of, of this, you know, for, for this season, of back Nigel, fantastic home and away. Uh, the support's been Im- immense for him, and, and I'm sure Nigel, you know, will, will have the boys uh, g'd up and, and, and ready to get that that, that important win. Um, I think the crowd's so important, though, Craig. Uh, you know, this stage of the season, you know, as much as players won't admit it, there'll be a few tied legs, and you know, it, 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 there will be there will be some tied minds. And, it, and sometimes it's hard as an individual to, to push yourself that extra yard. But, uh, you know, all I can say is that um, with it being at home, you know 100% that the crowd will be behind um, Nigel and the boys and hopefully they can they can drag them over the line and then and then hopefully they get the results, you know, elsewhere that, that, will, um, that will hopefully seal, um, you know, promotion. From an outsider's perspective, it's absolutely crazy the way that this season's gone. To think that... You know, anyone from third down to I think ninth can still, well, I think third down to eighth can still get automatics, and then third down to ninth can still get in the playoffs. It just shows how exciting football is, and, and how close League Two has has become now. And from a manager's perspective, that must be really something which uh, is quite a juicy thing. It's not a boring league. You know, every game's going to be competitive. There's no gimmies anymore. Well, first and foremost as well, I think, Craig, I think we've come through a really turbulent sort of two years with COVID and stop-start football. And and I don't think you realise how much everybody's missed it. And um, it's great that you, you, you're you playing in an exciting league, you know, full of good teams and, and competitiveness. And and more importantly, um, you know, from the early season form to, to, to where the, you know, the, the team is now. It, it, it's been it's been a fabulous season, and um, you know I think I think the club will just want to cap it off now, uh, you know, with either a good result and, and results going for them, or or, or to go and win the playoffs. Um, either way, it's it, I think it's been a really really positive season, and um, I think the fans understand that, and they, they vote with their feet by by coming and supporting the club both home and away in in, in the numbers. Yeah, and it, it must fill you with immense pride as well to see that. You know the foundations which you sort of laid in getting us back to the football league have, have continued to to sort of grow and grow. We had obviously had a couple of seasons where it wasn't quite going right and uh, and things like that. But Nigel Clough comes in it and turns it around, and you must be really really itching now to to see the club get up another level and sort of sort of give you that extra belief of 
that that those foundations that you set are continuing to be solid. Yeah, look, it's. Um, I think the club needs it now. Um, you know, I've watched uh, still speak to Coops regularly. Um, obviously, I've took one or two of the lads from the club on loan myself. Um, you know, when we did get to the club, in, you know, early on, there was, you know, the, the, there was no proper youth set up there. And, and, and I see the youth set up flourishing now, uh, bringing good young players through. Uh, you know, the first team, you know, you've got an excellent manager in, in, in charge of the club. And um, I think it, it, the all the foundations are there now to, you know, to step into, into League One. And then, um, you know, I'm sure Nigel will have his plans then, uh, not to get too far ahead of, you know, the, themselves. But, you know, they, they've got to have an eye on, on on the next level. Clubs like, you know, Wickham have done it in the past. So, so why can, you know, why can't clubs like Mansfield do that? So, um, but first and foremost, uh, you know, I think Nigel will be concentrated on, you know, this weekend. He'll want, first and foremost, to get a good result. Like I say, the crowd, I think, will play the part all the, all the way through the 90 minutes. And then you'd probably need a bit of luck, you know, with with um, you know with results, um, you know, for, falling for you. But um, I, I'm, a, I'm a great believer that you make your own luck in, you know, in in, in this league uh, and, and in this game. So uh, look, fingers crossed, and um, you know, positive, you know, approach to it, and and go and win your game, and then, like I say, it's in the lap of the dogs, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's an interesting one because we we obviously sit and we talk about what could happen if we go up or if we get into the playoffs and things like that. But one thing we don't sort of uh, think about is what happens if it swings the other way. I mean, at, at, at the very, very worst, it, it takes something miraculous for Mansfield to not finish in the playoffs this season. I think they need to lose and sort of need to, to win. But it's not beyond the, re- the realms of possibility. And like you sort of said earlier, it's difficult, isn't it, from a manager's perspective to, to sort of for plan obviously players contracts are coming to an end you're starting to think about who you might want to bring in next season but it all depends on where you are and Nigel Clough has got to have his head sort of screwed on and, and be switched on to the possibility of things not quite going Mansfield's way and having to, to go again next year and you know like you spoke about your spell earlier your first year you, you get to the playoffs and we only we don't get past the semi-finals but the second year we use the momentum for that so I imagine that'll be something which Nigel Clough is, is thinking quite heavily about as well well I, I think Nigel you know will, will be full of positiveness about about coming into this game and um look it's it's you know if he wins the game and results go against him then you know you've finished on a you've finished by by beating a, a club that have been consistently in that top three all season. So, you know, what what a good mindset to go into the playoffs with, with beating, um, you know, a club that's already been promoted. So um, I can't see Nigel having any any sort of, um, any focus on next season. I just think he's got to concentrate. You know, he's an experienced guy. He's been, he's been through this before. He'll, 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 be, he'll be solely looking on winning, you know, Saturday's game. And then, you know, look, if results do go um, against against him, then, you know, like I say, what, what, what a massive positive that you've gone and beaten, um, you know, one of the clubs that's already promoted. So, you know, only bodes well. Uh, I think, you know, when when the dust settles, when when all the, you know, promotion places and, and the playoffs have been played, I think that's when Nigel will probably sit down and, 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 and sort of have a focus, um, you know, on next season. But, um, yeah, he's an experienced guy. He knows what he's doing. He's, you know, he's done a fabulous job. And um, like I say, yeah, he, you know, I'm fingers crossed that he can he can get them over the line this season and, um, and take the club into an, into another league. It does feel like the the time's right to go on and do it. Twenty years since we were last promoted from within the football league, and then obviously ten years since we got to the playoffs under yourself in in the conference, and then nine since we won the title. I'm sure we'll be reuniting next year to sort of talk about that a little bit more and, and do some things surrounding that anniversary. But one thing I want to touch upon is the here and now because you look at the players that you had in that squad 10, 9 years ago and quite a lot of them this year, those that are still playing, have got on to have uh, su- success in terms of promotions and, and things elsewhere. That must fill you with a lot of pride as well to see those lads still sort of getting involved and still making those memories. Yeah, look, I still keep in touch with it. It was a special group, to be honest. Um, there was a lot of alpha males in there, a lot of uh, strong character uh, individuals, but more importantly, as a collectiveness, they, they were they, they were superb together. The team spirit was excellent, um, and and you know individually they've they've gone on and, and had good careers elsewhere. You know, people like the Reeds, you know, the the Matt Greens. Um, you know, obviously John Dempster went on to manage the club, so it, it's been it's been a real positive 
Um, and I get a sense of pride of of the group not just um, falling apart. That they, they, they've gone on and, and and done really well in the in their individual careers and, and lives. So uh, I think I think that's you know that, that that's a sense of you know something that makes me really proud. Um, you know, knowing that the this group that 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 were excellent. I mean, you know, you look at the, the season we went up, the FA Cup run we had was was out of this world as well. So um, you know, the achievements were, were were brilliant. But like you say, it's um I think it's now time for for the club to now to take that next step into in, into League One. I think everything's in place. And um, you know, when I look at League One, I go, you know, this this scope then to go and attack the top end of League One next season. But like I say, first and foremost, it's it's do a job Saturday. I can't not have you on without sort of talking about you in the here and now as well. You mentioned it a little bit earlier on. Obviously, ending the season as, as Boston manager, we obviously wish you all the best for, for next season. And I'm sure that there'll be many a Stags fan that's keeping an eye on results uh, for Boston next year as well. But also this year, you were at Kettering for a little while. And whilst you were there, like you mentioned before, you had a, a couple of the younger Stags lads on loan, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Um, you know, we, we, we've taken one or two, obviously. I still keep in touch with Coops. You know, he's doing a fa- fabulous job at the club, you know, bringing these kids through uh, with Mike. Um, look, it's, you know, there's, there's always going to be that relationship there. You know, just I'm really happy that the club's helped us out. Um, you know, when we was at Kettering, it, 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 you know, obviously it was tough. Um, it's funny that Kettering overtook us in, in the playoffs on uh, on Monday. Um, you know, a club I've just left. But like I say, it, it's a really competitive league, um, you know, that I'm in at the minute. The similarities, I think, between Boston and, and, and Mansfield. Uh, the chairman here has, has, has absolutely just worked his uh, socks off now for, for the last 10 years. And... Um, you know the foundation is laid for off the field, the ground, everything else is is, is amazing. And um, you know there's a bit of pressure on me, like there was at Mansfield, to produce because um, you know the ground is you know and the setup is is now as a as a football league club. And um, you know the club's found itself not moving forward in the last ten years um, and stuck in the in the National League North. So a lot of pressure, um, but it's something it's something that. Um, you know, when the job came available and, 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 and I spoke to the chairman, the, I saw the similarities in terms of the pressure of the job, but the um, the extent of, if you get it right, to where you could take the club. So, um, you know, I'm really excited again. I've got that mojo back that, I, you know, I feel I lost a little bit in, in football. Um, you know, say, you know, it, it's well recorded that. I took a bit of time out of it. Um, but like I say, I'm really, really excited about, about um, well, we're still in the chance of the playoffs this year, but... Um, you know, if it wasn't happen, you know, the building of, of next season, a lot of similarities between between this and Mansfield. How many games have you got left? Just the one game. We've got to win on Saturday and and we've got to score more goals than Kettering. So um it's um it's a tough ask. Um you know, but it's uh like I say, it, it, it's a tough one because you know, when we came to the club, you know, the injury situation was was horrendous. I mean it's it, it's still now we've got four probably of the better players all hobbling around on crutches. Um, but anyone that knows my mindset knows that, you know, it's still a challenge on Saturday and, 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 it, and it still can be achieved. Um, if not, then, um, you know, we're going to work really hard in the summer, uh, as we did at Kettering. Um, you know, I find Kettering at the bottom of the league and uh, struggling, you know, and we, we, had, we had a close season of, of recruitment and, and building. And, um, you know, I left a squad together that was really, really, really hungry, you know, for promotion. So, um so yeah, I'm in the I'm, I'm stuck in the middle, Craig, at the minute because you know the club I left uh, or, or ourselves could make the playoffs on on, on Saturday. You know, a group, good group of players I left at, at, at Kettering, and I've got a good group here that, that we're trying to build with. So um, it, it's all positive, and like I say, I'm just enjoying my football. I'm really, really, really focused and excited about about um, about moving forward now. Yeah, well, if if all else fails, just show them the clip of Alan Marriott scoring from uh, edge of his own box against Wrexham, and uh, it's, it, any goal counts, doesn't it, at this stage of the season? So I'm sure we wish you uh, all the best on that one. Uh, before yeah. we let you go, I know obviously on Saturday you'll have um, all eyes on uh, on your your current job and things like that, but there will be a small part of you, I'm sure, that as soon as you get a spare couple of minutes, you'll be looking at Mansfield's results. Of course, Craig. Uh, like I say, I'm you know anyone that knows me knows I don't tell fibs. Um, you know, that I, I've got an affinity with the club. I'll always have an affinity with the club. Um, you know, and like I say, 
Uh, first and foremost, I've got to concentrate on, on, on the job at hand. It's a big, it's a really, really big job, um, you know, to get them in there. But, but you know, fingers crossed. And I, I mean, it's genuinely, I really hope that you know the club can can do it this season. I think it's it'd be a nice time uh, time frame to step into the next league uh, with the strong foundations that have been built over over a number of years. So yeah, you know, hope Nigel and uh, and the boys do it. And um, like I say. Um, We'll raise a glass if, if, if they do.